Yes, and before before we start, Nate, can you just help uh, Therese? She did, just needs help with enabling captioning because- Yes, she... I can do that. Perfect, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our lovely class this Thursday. I am Jen, I handle the marketing here at ImpressArt. And I'm with the lovely Joanne next to me. Uh, she's going to help me transition handing these over to her uh, soon. Um, but she handles our digital yeah. marketing. So I don't know if you want to say anything else. Oh, yeah, I'm the digital marketing person. <laughs> <laughs> I work with Jen right now. And I'm basically the one that is chatting with you guys or sending you the products that we're using. Yes. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat window to the right of your screen or at the bottom of your screen if you're on mobile. Um, we'll be popping in any products Rita will be using uh, during the class. And as we start introducing ourselves, if you want to introduce yourself in the chat room to your other fellow uh, classmates, um, just let us know where you're stamping from and hopefully you'll see if you have a friend close by. Um, but today we're doing a Father's Day um, keychain because Father's Day is a Sunday. So these are great last minute gifts that takes a couple of minutes to make. Um, so I'm gonna have our lovely Rita Panula, who's our design director, talk a little bit more about the project and what else you will be learning in the class. Um, so we'll get started because we have a fun one hour class with you guys. So I'm gonna hand it over to Rita and she can introduce herself. All right, hi guys, welcome. Um, it's been, I don't know, a couple of weeks since our last class. So welcome back if you have um, taken a class with us before. If you are new, welcome. We always love newbies. Um, my name is Rita Pnula. I am the design director for Impress Art. Um, I think I might have the best job in the world, not only because I get to play with stamps all day, but I get to teach you guys my love for metal stamping. So I see we have a lot of, a lot of ladies from Texas. We have, let's see, I saw a New York City in there. We're coming to you from Long Island, New York. You could tell by the accent probably. Um, and I see Lynn and I see a lot of our people. So I just want to stop really quick and just let you know that every Tuesday on the Impress Art Facebook page, we have Facebook Lives at 1230. And these are great. You know, the classes are fantastic, but the lives also, you know, because it's an hour and a half, you get to pick up a little bit more on tips and, tr tips and tricks um, and how to use your stamps, not only um, tutorials, but even just how to take care of them or design technique. Um, and you will notice that we are a beautiful bunch of creative individuals in that group. Um, so come on by on Tuesdays at 12.30 and join us. All right, so today is Father's Day. Father's Day is around, around the corner, but this is a great gift, not only for Father's Day. We're on the West Coast. I know a lot of my friends in Texas, California, you guys are already out of school. Um, on the East Coast, we're still in school until next week, but this is also a great gift for end of the year teacher gifts. All right. So keep that in mind. A really cute saying, teach, inspire, teach love, inspire is a, is a good one with the teacher's initials, but Father's Day for your grandfather. I personally have this key ring on one of my pocketbooks. Um, so it's not just a Father's Day thing, it could be all year round. And what is better than giving something sentimental, hand stamped for you to be the best gift giver? All right, so I am going to, God, there's captions on the bottom of this and my eyes keep on <laughs> going to it. Is that, I've never seen that before, but okay. So um, I guess I'll shoot it back to Jen and Jen will tell you about this Stamp It Forward that we have going on while I get my blog ready to have a little bit of fun. So I'm handing it back to you, Jen. I see you smiling over there. Yes, there is an option <laughs> while you set up that you can actually click, I think the three dots more and actually hide the subtitles. Oh, all you right. So, you know, so not, you, I'm, you I'm can play chatting. around with that. I'm um, so yeah, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, for a second. If you have any questions, um, feel free to chat them in the chat room. Me and Joanne will do our best to answer your questions. Um, 
And we will also call out certain questions for Rita to answer live on camera. If for some reason we don't get to your question, don't feel uh, bad. Or uh, um, we will try our best, um, but you can always DM us on Instagram or Facebook or email support at impressart.com. And we will answer those questions and troubleshoot anything that you need. You can send us photos or videos. Um, what else do we have? Facebook group. So we do have an official um, Impress Art Facebook group that we started about a month ago that we have our fellow um, makers who use Impress Art products gets to post their um, projects, um, ask for inspiration from other people, maybe help with some business tricks. So we're going to post that link. So if you have a Facebook account, you can join our Facebook group after you ask, uh, answer a couple of questions and we will admit you into the group. And then Rita mentioned something about Stamp It Forward. Uh, we love um, spreading kindness through our hand stamp pieces. So we have this slogan that kindness inspires kindness, so stamp it forward. So as you start to create and hand stamp your own pieces, what a lovely gesture it would be to hand stamp something Something simple doesn't, you don't need to know um, who you're hand stamping it for, but if it's like a simple inspirational message or a word or um, any kind of like trinket, uh, you can stamp it and either give it to a family member or a friend, maybe give it to a complete stranger that you meet on the street. Maybe you want to give it to your mailman, male woman. Um, Leave it in the park. Your 7-Eleven <laughs> cashier who sees you every single day on your way to uh, work in the morning, um, but just a small gesture that we say, um, I'm thinking about you, hope this makes you smile. And if you want to do that and um, post it on your social media pages and use the hashtag stamp it forward, we would love to see your random act of hand stamp kindness. Um, so I'll stop talking because we have 45 minutes. Um, but I think Rita's ready if she wants to I say I am yes. ready. We are and good to go. We will get going. So if Nate, you want to switch it over. All right, guys. So I'm just going to walk you through a setup really quickly, okay? Um, here is a four by four steel block. When you are metal stamping in order to be... Um, right on spot with it, okay? You definitely are going to need a steel block. Um, these are available at Michael's. The larger size won't be available until I wanna say two months from now, but um, they do have the two by two squares, which are just as good. So remember, in order to be um, stamping perfectly and your metal is nice and straight, it is imperative that you use a steel block, okay? Also, the Argo Angle Hammer, all right? This is a brass-tipped hammer. The reason why we use brass is because brass is soft. And when you strike your stamp, which is steel, all right, these right here, okay, it's gonna absorb that shock and not bounce. Sometimes when we use a household hammer um, and you've stamped before, uh, maybe you get half of an impression or you have an impression and then a tiny, shadowing on top, which is called a ghost impression. And that's because your stamp is um, bouncing when it hits your steel. So steel on steel bounces, brass will absorb the shock and the bounce of that um, hit on your shank. So we always suggest using a brass head hammer. Okay, um, we are gonna use Arcadia uppercase today and Arcadia numbers. Please feel free to use Austin uppers or lowers and numbers, doesn't matter. Um, I wanted to switch it up a little bit. These two are available at Michael's, upper, lower, and numbers. And it's just a really nice old school typography font, okay? I think I froze. Did I freeze? Am I good? Yep, you're good. Your screen disappeared okay. for a second, but you're fine. Yeah, it's so weird. Okay, so... Um, that's what we're going to use as well as the numbers. These are a three millimeter font. Okay. You're going to need a key ring. I'm going to show you how you could stamp in a circle using your sticker guides. If you don't have your sticker guides, I'm also going to show you a trick um, using just the edge of your blank.
And then we have aluminum premium blanks. Okay, these are available um, at Michael's. So this is a 16 gauge. It's got nine pieces in it. It's nice and thick. You know, Jen, could you just tend Joanne and tell them to not call me because it's the office. <laughs> oh, yes, I will. That's weird. Thank they know you. We're, they know we're in here. That's very weird. Uh, it's, it's Allison <laughs> with a FaceTime. So, oh, all right. It, oh. um, <laughs> so, yeah. So um, there is a difference. If you've gone to Michael's and you picked up an Alchemy or an aluminum, they're both very soft metals. Okay. Your brass and your copper are harder metals. So if you are a beginner stamper, aluminum is what you want to use, okay? Alchemy is another silver metal that is available at Michael's. It's just a, basically, it's a tin-based alloy, very similar to pewter, okay? You get less pieces in the packaging. Um, the aluminum is definitely what you should use if you are a beginner. Keep in mind that if you do pick up the brass and the copper, you're going to have to adjust your hit with the hammer a little bit more because they are harder metals. All right, so we are gonna get started. I'm gonna open up this pack. I love when I get new packs of blanks. Pull that off. Courtesy of Jen's mailbox. <laughs> Courtesy of Jen's mailbox <laughs> that I ran to go get. And for those of you, I, yes, I'm still working from home. Um, in and out of the office, but mostly designing and teaching classes remotely. So hence Jen's mailbox and the office calling me on the phone. <laughs> All right, so there are two ways that you could do this project. Um, one, you could use your sticker guide. So what we're gonna utilize with the sticker guides is our medium sticker, okay? So this is one of our, this is the small, this is the medium, and then there are there's a large and I like to call it extra large, okay? So you can utilize, depending on the font, we're gonna use a three millimeter font. I would go with your medium size sticker. What I want you to do if you are a beginner, okay? I want you to always have your stamp set in your non, on your non-dominant side. So I'm a righty. My hammer is gonna go on my right side. My stamp set's gonna go on my left side, okay? And that's only because I don't want you switching hands while you're positioning your stamps. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a sticker guide off, a medium round, not so large, let's get a medium. All right, actually take that back. We're gonna go with the large. Okay, and you're gonna place that right in the center of your washer, okay? Just like that. And then um, if you are a seasoned stamper and you don't like to tape, tape, uh, tape down your blanks, you don't have to. I'm gonna use the Stamp Straight Tape, also available at Michael's, and I'm just going to tape that down a little bit right at the top. All right, I'm really not going to um, press hard on the top of my metal because I want to keep my sticker in good condition. So I'm just basically um, pressing down on the tape across the top of my block, on my block, so it just secures it a little bit more. Okay, so how you use these stickers, is this is a three millimeter font. We're working with a font that is wide, okay? So what you want to do is you want to utilize the spaces in, not in between, on your hash marks, okay? So if you see your sticker guide, you have black and you have orange. So that's where I'm gonna start my personalization. So I'm gonna start with S, E, A, N, okay? I'm gonna use, I'm gonna start with Sean. So I'm gonna pull out my letters. Obviously, I am right-handed. My stamp is going in my left hand, okay? If you are having an issue with lining up, all right, you could always take a Sharpie marker and mark the center of your stamp, okay? So I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna turn you sideways. So you wanna make sure that obviously the impress art's facing you when you're stamping. 
for camera reasons, I'm gonna turn it around just so you guys could see this part of it. You're gonna place your stamp down and lightly drag it up towards the tape. When you, when you slide it up lightly, you're gonna feel the restriction in that sticker guide, okay? It kind of acts as a stopper, all right? When you feel that restriction and, you know, it's a ledge, if you run your finger over it, you will feel it, but it restricts you from going over it because it's so thick. So you're gonna place it down flat, lightly drag that up. Once you feel that sticker, I want you to press down on your stamp. Keep in mind, you wanna pull your pinky out from underneath your fingers, okay? Press down, take your hammer and give it a nice hit. And there is my first letter. The reason why I tell you guys to use your non-dominant hand to line up is because what will happen? Let's say I'm taking, I'm using my right hand and I'm lining it up. Then I have to switch it and grab it with my left. Then I'm picking up my hammer. And in between me picking up my hammer, I'm wobbling and I'm moving it, okay? So you definitely want to use your non-dominant hand to move. And that's half, you know, that's half the battle is getting your muscle memory for your hammer and getting your fingers trained to use your left hand to move your stamp up, okay? So like I said, once you move that up, I'm lining up with the black and the orange line. I'm using all the, the hash lines, okay? So I'm gonna start with my E, okay? now. When I'm stamping with the sticker guide, okay, obviously the straight sticker guides we pull down. With these, we push up, okay? Um, I like to get a side view of it only because it's easier for me to line up, okay? So with that being said, I like to make sure that, you know, my indicators are facing in towards my palm, all right? So I'm placing down, lightly bringing up, lining it up, flat, Bring that up, press down when I feel that sticker, give it a nice tap. And there is my E. Rita, Susan is asking if you're lining up the impression with the black or orange line. I'm doing both. I'm doing, I'm using every hash line. Because this is a, 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 a thick font, okay, it's wide in nature. You can't use in between, you have to use every line. Okay, again with my A. Place it down, drag that up, feel that restriction, give it a nice hit. Same thing with the N. Flat, drag it up, meet that sticker. Give it a nice hit. So if you have your sticker guides, this is the way to use them. Okay. Now, if you don't have sticker guides, let's just push that to the side. We're gonna come in, again, you're gonna tape your blank at the top. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing. But with this, what we're gonna do is, we're going to not drag our stamp, we're gonna place it down. And I'm gonna just push you guys, get you a little bit more focused in here. See if I could spread that, okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up the circumference of the bottom of your stamp. Do you see that right here? Okay. You're gonna line that up right with the edge of your blank, okay? So as long as that edge of your blank is meeting up and flush, with your blank, you're gonna be stamping around the curve, okay? I 
There we go. And then you're just following around. Right, just like that. Jen, any questions? Nope, no questions yet. Nope, okay. All right, so we're Don't gonna be continue. shy, people. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people, the, the captioning is is an issue. Um, that's all I see is comments about yeah. that. Okay. So we're going to continue. I'm going to come back in. Let's pull you guys up a little bit more. Perfect. All right. And I'm going to come back in and I'm just going to move my sticker a little bit. And that's the greatest thing about these guys. They come right off. If you don't damage your sticker, you could reuse your sticker. I always like to use a pencil on my sticker guys, because you could always come in and look at that and erase them. All right, there you go. And then you can reuse it again. All right, so I'm coming back in. All right, and I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna use my ampersand. So I know we don't have an overhead camera because when we do have an overhead camera, it's really hard to see anything but my hands. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna drag that up, do you see that? Okay, I'm just gonna mark, I'm gonna use my ampersand right here in my, in my space. And I'm gonna continue. All right, so I'm gonna bring it down flat, lightly drag that up. Do you see how it hits that sticker? Press down, give it a nice tap. And there's my ampersand. And I'm gonna continue around. Flat. Lightly drag that up. Feel that ledge in that sticker. Press down, give it a nice tap. So if you've taken a class with us before and we've stamped in straight lines, we bring our stamp down to the sticker. With these round stickers, we're bringing it up. Now, if you are having problems with getting a full impression, okay, you could use a technique called tilt and tap. So I'm gonna bring you guys back a little bit so you could see my hammer. I'm gonna bring in just a scrap piece. So I could demonstrate this for you. Let's see, what do I have? Do I have another one? Let's use this one. All right. So I want to continue with my ampersand, right? So now let's say you're only getting the top half of your N or the bottom half of your N or you're heavy on your left and you're not heavy on your right. There's a way to do that. So once you have your stamp in the position that you want it, okay, you're going to put your pressure on it. Take your hammer, give it one hit without picking your stamp up. Then you're going to bring it, still pressing it into the metal, you're going to bring the stamp back to you, hit it away from you, side, side. And what that's gonna do is, that's gonna make sure that you've hit it evenly on all four sides of that stamp. So you're gonna get a full impression. So if you're having an issue with getting a full impression because you're unsure of 
um, the force to use behind your hammer, you definitely want to try out that tilt and tap, okay? So we're gonna finish this one, all right, without the sticker, with just the tilt and tap. I'll pull you back just a little bit. There we go, so you could see my hammer. Of course, I'm lining up bottom of my stamp flush with the curvature of my blank. All right, I'm gonna hit it once at the top, bring my stamp back, forward, side. Now, I like to rock my stamp back and forth. You could do that as well. Just make sure that you keep on putting pressure on that blank. You never want to lift your stamp completely off. All right? The same thing will work with, you know, hitting it once on each side. So you're coming in again, hitting it once, bring it back, forward, side, side, and that's going to have all, it's going to make sure that your entire impression is in your metal. Okay, let's see what's next. Let's get, grab the tea, place that down, and hit back. Forward, side, side. Now I'm literally tapping it. I know you can't really see the force that I'm using behind it. Remember that you don't want to be too over aggressive with these because they are a soft metal. It's going to really, the harder you hit your stamp into that metal, it's going to spread your font out. So instead of it looking nice and clean and sharp, it's going to be a thicker version of the font. All right, so we have that. So that's a good way to do it. So if anyone's having a problem with that tilt and tap technique, it's a good way. It's a you know definitely um, a better option. Now, I've worked around the bottom of it with my second disc, okay, because I've finished stamping on this one. All right, I want to get it more in the middle of the disc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. All right, and I'm just going to pull my stamp up a tiny bit. All right, right there. All right, so the best thing about these stickers is that you can basically move them anywhere and adjust them to any blank that you have. So I'm gonna come in, put my name that I want on my next blank on my sticker, again, using every hash mark. Face it down, lightly drag that up. Now, if you noticed, I'm right in the center of this blank as opposed to being around the bottom of it. And that's happening just by me moving my sticker. If you're not getting, you're having problems with your impression, definitely, you know, do that tilt and tap. I'll finish the rest of it with a tilt and tap. Shout out to Brenda, she just signed on. Hi, Brenda. <laughs> It's important to move your sticker around as you're doing it. All right, so there's my N. And I'm just following.
So don't be afraid to move your sticker. Turn your block as you're stamping, okay? So we're gonna pull that. And you're gonna see that I'm in the center of that disc as opposed to being on the edge. So if you have not picked up these sticker guides, the sticker guide book, I definitely suggest that you do that. It is definitely a game changer, okay? And then for my last disc, we are going to use the numbers. Here are the three millimeter Arcadia numbers. And what I'm going to do first is, I'm gonna come in. Actually, we're gonna use a new sticker. The sticker book. Right. I'm going to come back and I want to do an established with my Z. So I'm going to use my, my hash marks and we're going to utilize the small heart from the heart pack that's available at Michael's. Okay, I believe this is the 1.5 heart that's in that pack. Yep, the heart pack is 1.5, 2.5, and 3. Yep. So I love that pack. This is my favorite pack. I use it for everything. Let's pull my E out. My S. T and I want to give that dot. I want to use my heart for that. I just think it's really cute and just adds a little bit of dimension. It's very playful. And I'm going to pull my sticker off. I just want to give it enough room so I could go around in the center. So here we have, let's see if I could zoom in on that. Huh. Nope. Okay. Let me bring that. There we go. So right here is the established disk. Okay. Then I have two names. Then I have one. Everybody's very quiet today. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do next is I like to use my buffing block in between my whole process. I don't just buff at the ends. I like to buff before um, I put my enamel and then I like to buff again after my enamel. So I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. All right, I'm just running it over. I'm 
cleaning the sides. Guys, you should always, we always forget about the sides of things. I think I even had a problem with that with ceramics in school. I would get like a good grade on my flat project or all sides, but I would never finish my sides or the bottom. Definitely take your buffing block to your sides, okay? It gives it a little bit more of a nice shimmer. So our next step is our enamel. So if you have been in Michael's, you notice that our enamel comes in different colors. So we'll play around with it a little bit, but I'm gonna show you how to utilize your black. So your black marker is an enamel marker. It's a water-based enamel, and it is designed to fit and stay inside of your stamped impressions. If you are having an issue with having your getting your enamel to stay in your impression, it's one of two things. One, you're like me, you're impatient, and you're wiping it out way too quick. Or two, your impression is not deep enough. What's important to know about this marker and about metal stamping is if your impression is not deep enough, the enamel has nowhere to sit and hold on to, okay? Because it basically acts as kind of like a, like a cover for the inside of your stamped impressions, okay? It needs those walls in order to stay in there. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your enamel marker and you're going to run it evenly over your stamped impressions. All right, making sure that you cover. You never want to, um, you know, hold it down and press it like a paint pen. Um, you'll have it all over the place then. So you're just going to lightly run it across your blank. Okay. You never want to shake it either. All right. And what I like to say is you want to make it messy before you make it clean. All right. So you're going to take a regular household paper towel. It's dry, has nothing on it. Okay. And I just want you to blot it, make it ugly. Right. What this is doing is just moving your enamel around a little bit. All right, so once you've blotted, you're gonna lightly begin to wipe. And you can see that I'm very lightly wiping the metal. You know, so you've given enough time for your enamel to settle in your impression. Okay, and you have not wiped it out. You'll see that you know the enamel will stay in nice, strong, and deep impressions like that. All right, so we're going to continue. We'll do Samantha next. You come in with your enamel marker, run it over. Now troubleshooting. Let's say we went over if your enamel is not staying in your impressions. Um, let's quickly talk about you enameled your piece and you walk away. I'm notorious for doing this. All right. I let my enamel dry too long and now I go to take it off and it's not coming off. All right. So we're going to put Samantha to the side. We're going to let her dry completely and I will show you what you could do to fix that. Okay, you not you don't have to use antibacterial. You don't have to use any alcohol. There's a simple fix. It doesn't um, warrant you getting up from your table, your crafting table, your crafting room to find something to you know some kind of adhesive to take it off. It's very simple. All right, so we're just going to put her aside. We're going to let that dry, and then I'm going to come in and I just want to show you guys our different colors. All of them. I'm missing. What am I missing? I'm missing the gold. Seems to always be the marker that's missing. So it's available in a patina green that's very much like a bluish green, uh, a silver metal flake, a gold metal flake, and a nice cayenne brown. Okay. This brown looks amazing in brass and copper. Okay. It's definitely one of my favorites. But what I'm gonna show you now really quick, we'll go through the whole, um, all the colors. But what I wanna show you now is I like to blend and mix, all right? So if you don't want something that's so 
um, dark in your impressions and you want more of a gray liver or sulfur feel, you're gonna mix your black and your silver. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that now. So I'm gonna take my nail marker and I'm gonna run it over the impressions. All right. And like I said before, we're going to really just blot it, okay? And that's how you're gonna leave it. Then we're gonna come in with the silver marker, okay? And we're gonna mix. And do you see how that's turning it more of a gunmetal gray? All right, and if it's too light, you could definitely come back in. I wouldn't go over it completely. I would just give it a little, you know, little wisps in your impressions. Blot it, lightly wipe. And what's nice about this effect is you have more of a gunmetal gray look. Okay. And it's metallic. So you have a really nice glitter in there, but it's not overly shiny or glittery. It's more of a muted gray. Does everybody see that? So for my jewelry makers out there, if you're familiar with liver of sulfur, that's the kind of look that you get. So you can see the difference between the black enamel and the mix of that black and silver, more of like a, mood, a muted or a gunmetal gray, depending on how much you use of the black and the gray. All right, let's see if she is dry. Okay, so I have dry enamel, can't get it off. I'm gonna open up my black enamel again, and this goes for any of our enamel, and I'm gonna wet it with another layer of enamel, okay? I'm gonna come in, dab it, lightly wipe. And that takes that enamel completely off. So enamel takes away enamel. All right. There we go. And then I like to come in with my block and I just like to give it a nice polish at the end. I remember my sides. All right, then I'm gonna come in with my key ring, okay? Now you could use a jump ring, a key ring opener. These are available at Michael's. They are very sturdy, but they are soft as well. So I'm just gonna take that, feed it right through, and I'm very lightly moving it around, okay? You don't wanna be too aggressive with these because this will scratch the metal. All right, but you see I have no marring, no scratches. And then I'm just gonna continue. Rita, as you're putting those on the key, key ring, um, Maravel had a question and asked, do you seal um, your metal to prevent it from fading? Um, do I seal my metal or my enamel? Both in general. Okay, so Maravel. I am a big fan of not sealing your metal for the simple fact that um, what we carry at Impress Art is jewelers grade brass, copper, um, aluminum, and a pewter. And what I don't like about sealing it is that sometimes you're sealing your seal, if you seal your coat, your blanks, they start to crack and peel. All right. And then you have to literally sand the entire piece to get all of that coating on to spray it again. 
I like to just, once it oxidizes a little bit, your brass and your copper oxidizes, you can just take your buffing block and shine it right back up. All right, so I'll take a piece that we did here. All right, and this has been sitting on my block for, I wanna say a good month, maybe Jen, I think. Um, but I'll just show you how that buffing block takes that tarnish right out. I'm just not a fan. Do you see that? Takes that tarnish right off. I'd rather polish, be able to polish over and over again than to um, have cracking or peeling um, a seal coat on it. All right. I'm gonna put my third on there. And, like and this just is just a right. random question that maybe people will ask. I'll ask it because it happens to me all the time. How should you put the key, uh, the washers on in order of what you want on the top first? So I always mess is, up and one looks backwards and the other and I have to take it off and like switch it around. <laughs> oh, so when you're holding, I thought that now I know what you're saying. Yeah. When you're holding your jump ring, you want to make sure that your stamped impressions are always facing up. Okay. And the first one you put on is going to be the top one, right? The first, well, you could or, work backwards. backwards. It's really up to you. Yeah. Okay. All right. And here is that cute little key ring that would really look, it looks adorable on my pocketbook, actually. Jen has one on her pocketbook, too. I think Joanne even has one on her pocketbook, right, girls? <laughs> We Honestly, I think I'm going to make this one over the weekend and put, so my dad can put his boat keys on with a, like a life preserver thing. So when he goes on the boat. And yes. The, yeah. That's what I think I'm going to do. You could stamp something funny, like, please don't sink. <laughs> or don't call me, call Cito. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like something funny. I always like funny. I like funny things. Funny. Yeah. We don't laugh enough. So this is a really amazing project. And like I said, you don't even have to use three. Um, you know, if there's someone that, you know, a new neighbor that you want to welcome, like how cute would that be? Like welcome to the neighborhood or, you know, um, I'm sorry, you know, I don't know that my kids are loud in the backyard or, you know, something, something cheeky, something funny, but um even if like you haven't seen someone in a long time. Um, this is a really great project just to jump to, you know, you could drop it right in the mail first class and not worry about it. So, all right, so this is a really good idea. Is any other questions? We did have a question um, from Sally. I was waiting for the end of it. She has one of the basic kits from Michael. So those are either like Bridgette, Sans Serif, or Typewriter um, in those orange, teal, okay, or I'm gonna, let me grab. I'm going to grab a set. Is she talking how to mark them? Correct. You read my mind. All right. Hold on one second. Let me run across. Well, I'm not running because God knows that will be a disaster. <laughs> Let's see what I have. All right, so they're not in order, obviously, because nothing in my life is in order in the studio right now. But this is what Jen is referring to. All right, so when you open your stamps, they should be mirror imi um, imaged, right, Jen? Uh, yes. Okay, let's see if I can get it. I think I pretty much have it. So you have them, here's your mirror image. All right, you're going to not take them out. That's like the biggest thing that everyone does. They're like, oh, we're gonna take the stamps out. Don't take the stamps out. Don't take them out. Let's see what I have. I don't have a black marker here, but I have a brown Sharpie. So what I want you to do is you're going to pull, oh, I already have them marked. <laughs> oh, perfect. All right, so you're gonna pull one up, put your dot, okay? Come back in, pull up put it down and you're going to follow that all the way through. All right. It's a little bit, you know, tedious and time consuming, but I have faith that you guys will do it correctly. All right. Um, and once you've marked all of them, that's going to be your indicator. So when I'm stamping and I'm pulling it out, instead of having the impress art, 
I know that my dot, if it's facing me, I'm stamping in the right direction, okay? You could also, um, once you've made your dots on everyone, you wanna pull them out, you could always put another indicator mark at the bottom of it. So this is my A, okay? Here you go. Um, you could also, if you're worried about it rubbing off, you could take some clear nail polish and just hit it right over it once it's dry and it will stay on there for you. Did someone, I see a comment about rust. Yeah, Lazo asks, will they rust like if it gets wet? Okay, so here's the deal. So we're in New York and you know, we have, you know, I live by the water, not very high cool, humidity, but yeah. Um, I've never had a problem with a set of stamps in my house. Now, with that being said, over the summer, I moved. I had all of my stamps. Okay. And I am a collector. So if you guys could see, I am pretty much, I'm loaded up. Um, I did have very minimal rust. I had them in a container and on my driveway, I had my whole studio um, uh, in a container for a week, all right? And I did not, I, where I knew, I said, I know I'm gonna open up this container and I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be sanding and cleaning for days. That wasn't the case. There was one set that I had that did get some um, condensation on it that did rust, but it is very easy to clean your stamps that rust, okay? If your stamps rust, all you're going to do is take a steel head brush, a little bit of elbow grease, not steel, you could do a brass or a steel, completely up to you. What I'm using here is brass, and you're just going to knock some of the rust off your stamps. That's it. And then after, you could always give it a nice oiling with machinist oil. I use Moroccan hair oil because I don't know, I like the smell of it. So I use it. You could also use olive oil, uh, baby oil, but be very light with the baby oil. You know, anything to just lubricate them a little bit. All right but you could get like a light Moroccan oil at the dollar store. So don't go crazy spending like $20 on machinist oil. So that's how you take, um, take some rust off. But I literally have not had a problem yet. If they get wet, any kind of metal guys, any kind of steel, if it's not treated, all right, but even treated steel is going to rust if you let it sit in wetness. All right, I hope that answers your question. Anything else? Um, just one last question. Um, Maribel also wants to know about, um, will the enamel fade from the impressions and what, like, how can you prevent it from happening and what should you do if it does happen? Okay, if it happens, all you have to do is color it right back in. Um, I enamel my pieces and I do a secondary process in a tumbler, which is a tumbler is um, very similar to a rock tumbler. It's actually the same thing. And it just shines and debores your jewelry if you do it correctly. Um, and my enamel does not come out. Now, if you are making to sell, or you are someone that wears a lot of essential oils or someone that is, you know, very, um, <clears throat> we live in a world now where antibacterial is like a process three times, four or five times a day, de depending on where you go. Um, any kind of alcohol is going to pull out, um, pull out your enamel. I haven't had it happen to me, but I have heard it happening. Um, any kind of perfume directly on your piece of jewelry, you know, just, I would stay away from swimming in chlorine with it on, but it takes two seconds to fill it back in if it does come out, but it's very rare that it does come out.
Anything else? No, that's all the questions. And it's four o'clock on the dot, which oh, is too. a record for us. Oh my God. I still <laughs> haven't I still haven't changed my clock. I'm still at three. Oh, so we have okay. another hour. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but if there's turn. no other questions, guys, this is our favorite part of the class. Um, if you're not shy and you want to turn on your camera now so we can see your lovely faces, or if you were stamping with us and you want to show off what you stamped in this past hour, uh, we'd love to say hi to you. We have so we Nicolette. See, hi, Nicolette. Hi, your OGs. We see Linda and Brenda. <gasps> hi, Brenda. Brenda, you're at work. Brenda, I can't wait one day for you to tune in and you're sitting on a lounge chair on an <laughs> island. <laughs> with a pineapple drink in your hand. I, I'm praying for that day for you, girl. Hi, Nicolette. Nicolette. Hi, Marianne. We have Angela, Anita. Hello. Hi, Linda. Oh, hi, Maribel. Oh my God, look so how cute. beautiful everyone looks today. Oh. Let's see. Linda looks like she's relaxing. Anita's got a nice started her summer tan. You look good, Anita. I can't. Hi. Well, it's really nice to see you guys. Um, so hop on, definitely hop on over to our Facebook uh, lives on Tuesdays. All right. At 1230 Eastern Standard Time. This one's a good one. This one is going to be um, a constellation anklet and toe ring. So if you want to make some jewelry for the summer and show off your unpedicured feet like mine, <laughs> come my, hop on my, over. My, my husband, my that's what my husband was like. What are you going to do about those feet for next week? I was like, I'm going to take a picture of the neighbor's feet. <laughs> Joanne, or is, what, or one of my <laughs> feet is at work. Yeah, no, I'm gonna. That's going to be a hard no for me. But I'll show you how to make them. We're All right. Yes. Yeah, so um, we are still planning some Michael's classes for the summer as well as into the fall. So be on the lookout for that. Michael's is getting a couple of new products soon. I want to say late summer of ours. So we're getting a reset. So you should see some new products Ooh. out there soon. A um, lot of new products. It's going to be fun. Yes. Fun, fun, fun. Facebook lives is always on Tuesday at 1230 PM Eastern standard time, unless we delay it for some reason, we'll let you know. Um, sign up for our Facebook group and be a part of our amazing community of makers. Um, you'll be in the end of a lot of different things. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So have um, a phenomenal weekend and a very, very nice Father's, Father's Day, Day weekend. Yeah. Or for our mamas who are daddies, same thing to you ladies. Treat yourself. Um, <laughs> Treat yourself yeah. to a pedicure because I think that's what I might have to do for, for Tuesday's live. So um, have a great weekend. Thank you for joining us. We are humbled that you joined me and Joanne and Jen today, and we will see you next time. Thank you, Nate. Bye, guys. Bye.